guys and aiming you were looking at some stats actually wolf and and showing how aiming hasn't had the best run of it with the Kalissa. They don't want to give that one over, but this does mean that the Azir is going to be first picked here for the side of DK. The Azir going over to Showmaker, denying it from BDD, one of his most iconic champions. And it is taken away the Talia, his other, taken away in the banning phase. And we'll see a priority here on the Zaya, it looks like here for aiming over his Kaisa that he's much more famed for. A pick he utilized during the AP Kaisa era and of course during the Shiv era as well. And Lehens, his Alistair, so incredibly strong, even looking to hover it here over the Rakan. And because we've seen this utilized even by Kellen himself on the other side against Azir shuffles. Don't think that's necessarily why it's being picked up, but it has been utilized by T plus, ironically enough, in that same scenario. They'll take it over the Rakan here. Let's see if Canyon's going to prioritize a jungle now with so much already taken away. Yeah, I, I, I think some uh, some co-streamers out there might be happy that Kellen's not going to have a chance to jump onto the Alistair once again. But yeah. to be honest, you know, that can happen. That kind of thing can happen. So I, I'm excited to see maybe Kellen can turn it around for this one and uh, handle this Alistair maybe on the other side of the matchup. But Jax, very highly prioritized here for Kana, so they're going to get him onto that. Yeah, interesting to see the Jax with this much priority, even over Renekton here that has been in the LCK paired more commonly with the Azir. But when you see the Jarvan come through, it all makes sense. You've got a nice setup here in terms of combos. Engage is good. Peel is good. And BDD is going to go back to an older favorite of his, the Orianna. And the Orianna Syndra meta back in 2021. He opted into the Syndra most of the time. We'll be going for the Orianna, the more winning champion in this tournament uh, this time around. So. We do have things starting to, to kind of settle in in terms of priority here. D plus can try to target Keen a little bit to protect this Jax priority, of course. And on the other side of things, 80 carries can be taken away from Def. Def loves to play prio picks, the Kalista, the Caitlyn, Draven, any pick that gets him prio and allows him to push the lane Lucian has been in the past. Lucian Nami. That's exactly Def's MO. So I really like this angle here from KT Rolster. And we're going to have Cassante banned. I know a lot of you out there are very sad about that. Um, there's no Cassante in this game, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty good. I, I think you want to take that one off the board in terms of like a blind pick you could get and then maybe save uh, the last pick for Cuz. He is a guy that can pick some of those wonky characters in the jungle. We saw the Zac already. Let's see what this next ban against Deft is going to be. At least that's what we're expecting. Um, no, it's just going to be the Renata, and you talked about this before. Kellen, a great Renata player, and they're going to take that one away from him. Yeah, Renata, fantastic for Kellen. Also works well if you're trying to do one of those all-in lanes. They don't have the Kalista, but we have seen Renata and Draven. Varus, another Ash. pick that's been used with it. Ash as well. So just kind of saying, we could take away the Caitlyn. That's the number one pick next to, to Kalista that allows them to push the lane. Renata kind of weakens some of the other ones that are left. We'll see the Akali banned away here. We have seen Keen play this top side. It is kind of common in the LCK, albeit not recently. So just keeping that one under wraps, it is so strong into the Azir. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I think, you know, as one of those edge pocket picks for Keen, trying to take that one away, there is still a lot left available in the top side. So Renekton seems pretty natural there uh, to go for on the side of Keen. They did not want to have to deal with the Akali into the Jack, something that Keen has just destroyed many a top laner on in the past. So they take that one away. The Renekton comes out. What is the bottom lane for DK? Will they be so bold as to lock the Ezreal? Something we've seen Death find success on in 2022's World Championship. The Ziggs! Oh, the yes! Ziggs! <laughs> it's happening, man! It's this! happening! Oh, man! Now, Deft is one of the guys in the LCK that has picked this one up. Now, we haven't been super happy with this build, but that's fine. The champion itself is really strong. And you know what? I mean, it's a lot of magic damage. You're going to be relying on kind of the Jax and the Jarvan to to tow up the AD damage, but, or rather just the attack damage, but the Ziggs coming out is just huge, and they're gonna use that to try to shut down. It's so good into Zaya. It like, is, it is amazing so into, good into Zaya. Zaya. And you know what else it pairs well with is Cataclysm from Jarvan. So you can set that up now. We will see the uh, Sejuani to get locked in here for Cuz. This has been one of his best picks throughout 2023. We saw KT Rolster since 2018 in the LCK really struggle to return to form. It was 2022 at the end of the year where we saw a little bit of a spike. Wasn't enough to send them to Worlds. They were ultimately defeated by DRX who did win the entire thing. But this has kind of been 
KT's biggest year in such a long time, and this Cuz Sejuani has been a huge part of this. In terms of Lehens, Alistair came up at the end of summer. Lehens was one of the best Alistair players at it. But otherwise, you're looking at aiming on Zaya versus Depth Ziggs does feel like a pretty big mismatch. And I'm gonna have to go with Kana on Jax, Canyon on this uh, this uh, Jarvan as a much stronger setup here, a much stronger combo. And I feel like D Plus got more of what they wanted, whereas KT feel like they're still adjusting to this new meta. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just trying to bring in the new meta uh, in some of these picks. This is the first Ziggs we have had in the bottom lane in an international event since MSI 2022. So that was last year, about a year and a half ago, right? Ziggs, it has power. Can Depth prove it in this matchup? I am so excited to find out. It is going to be his third time playing the champion this year. He's one and one on the pick, but one he has gone to in the past. And it's a really niche pick. D plus come very prepared for this. It's a pick we've all been talking about backstage as we think this is so strong. It's definitely going to come out in this tournament. It's coming out tonight. It's coming out tonight, and this DK versus KT Rolster matchup is also beginning right now. As the fan cheers. Oh my god. <laughs> they are going absolutely nuts out there. That is uh, amazing. The DK up against KT matchup. We've seen this many times in the LCK, and KT obviously having a fantastic uh, showing in the regular season. Not quite able to drive it home when it mattered most in terms of finals, it, when in terms of playoffs, but we know what this team is capable of. For KT Rolster, this is such a critical moment because we were talking about magic numbers on the Swiss stage. The magic number to get out is three, but the tragic number is three as well. You drop this one, you go 0-2, you're going to have to win several best of threes in order to get out of the tournament. And KT, they haven't lifted that Worlds trophy like Dom Juan did in 2020. They haven't been to Worlds in five years, and the fans are lucky enough to be able to see them locally here live in Korea after having a dominant year, yet not being able to make either domestic finals in the LCK. And I think for KT, this is such a critical moment. You went 0-1 at the start of the Swiss stage. You are the favorite here. You went 2-0 in regular season against D+. And you want to bring it back now. Absolutely. It's huge. And guys, you know what's also huge? You can connect your League of Legends account with Prime Gaming to grab the exclusive experimentation emote. Make sure not to miss this, guys. That emote is so cool. And you can just get it. If you just connect to your account, it's that easy with Prime and Gaming. And uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this one does play out. I, I talked a bit about builds. So we've seen a lot from Deft uh, down the, you know, Rod of Ages and Seraphs and Braze. I, I think that Ziggs doesn't really need that. Note that he also went for the cookies in this one. Did not go for cut down, especially against Renekton, Sejuani, even Alistair. I feel like you get a lot of value with that, but just going to forego that here. And like you said before, Wolf, he's had success. And it's especially good into Zaya, who loves when champions are attacking her, when they're where they're going very aggressively into her feathers. She can pull it back and get a lot of value on the disengage. Ziggs is the opposite of that, right? Yeah. He's got the range. He's got a lot of poke damage. And Zaya is going to struggle early on the lane. It's not going to be that big of a deal. But as the Ziggs gets items, I'll be very curious to see if aiming can handle the heat. Side note, if you couldn't tell, Valdez is a Ziggs main. Uh, yeah. Just had to put that one out there. Oh, yeah. And shout out to our boy Aux as well, recently joining the LCK. He is actually the original Ziggs main. This guy taught me everything I know. So <laughs> we've been, both been playing it for a long time. Just wanted to shout him out. And uh, just really happy that uh, Deft is trying to mix it up. I, I got a little worried when I saw, OK, KDD. Zaya's, Zaya's uh, just prioritized once again. But uh, yeah, good to see some new stuff coming out. Yeah, leaving the Zaya and having the answer, definitely very cool to see. BD taking a lot of damage here as Showmaker pushes the wave in and will have that additional prio. Canyon going to go for topside scuttle here with Ziggs and Leona in position to try to potentially contest bottom side here. We could see a double scuttle attempt, but it is going to be tough to pull off. Lehens is going to be able to corral Kellen out of here, and it's not going to happen. I also want to mention, of course, you do co Comet to try to continue to poke and get that, that additional lane lead here as Ziggs. But often you feel a lot of pressure and have to back often if you do get ganked. So you have Teleport. Also, Ziggs has incredible wave clear for the later parts of the game, does tons of damage to turrets. So that Teleport choice is kind of a Ziggs exclusive here in the bottom lane right now because you don't get value out of heal. You're not going to want to have cleanse because if you're getting caught by CC, you're not playing Ziggs right. Yeah, uh, he's all about zone control, right? You put down the mines, you use that satchel very 
expressively for when you're in danger, right? You don't want to use that to poke. So uh, Deft, he, he definitely knows how to play this champ. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's the perfect place for it as well. As we do see a bit of a 1v1 in the top side, Kana has played quite a lot of Jax, quite a lot of Renekton as well, and quite a lot of Jax versus Renekton. Uh, not too surprising, but uh, yeah, excited to see what he can get done in the top side against Keen. This has been a matchup we've seen many times in the LCK. And if you're a someone who watches, you know, Worlds, it is unique to see a new team here in KT Rolster, right? We didn't get DRX, obviously defending champions. The roster completely changed. But right now, D+, Plus, if you think about them having a title first time for KT, it feels like maybe D+, Plus are the ma massive favorites going into this one. But it's been a rough year for them. They've experimented with changing their support up. It's been shot calling issues for this roster. And Showmaker, it feels like for a long time, lost his mojo. But at least the start of this game, putting that pressure on in the mid lane, looking good television. Teleports are now traded. See if Keen can make something happen here with level six. I don't think so. We'll just put that additional pressure on. But D plus here, I like the draft, but KT has just constantly had their number this year long. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like what you say about DK. It's so true. I mean, it, it feels like they have the tools, but maybe just not the connection to get it going. The shot calling issue has been there and uh, you know, that first matchup against G2, it did look like they were able to turn it around at the Baron, but it was just barely not enough as G2 just straight up outplayed them by the end of it. So uh, willing to see if DK can kind of turn this one around in a really tough matchup in the, in the draw that we did have, of course, which was pretty fun to watch. As, uh, yeah, I, I love that Showmaker also takes away the Azir. He's not like the most flashy Azir out of all of our uh, Korean mids that we do have here uh, from the LCK specifically. Um, but to take it away, I mean, he knows what he's doing on that champ, so excited to see what he can get done. Yeah, it is certainly going to be very impactful in this game now because does not have level six, so his ability to affect this top lane is pretty small at the moment. Dragon has spawned mind you. And right now you do see Canyon hovering around the bottom side of the river here. We'll check vision. It's a very tense moment because neither team has really strong control over either top or bottom, so much so they can actually take these objectives, nor can they start them. And whoever starts it first will inherently be at somewhat of a disadvantage unless you can further that edge. So this is going to be a slow and passive early game here as Keen just continues to try to put the pressure on to Kana here top side. Well, living away at that first plate. Yeah, and no, he's going to be putting on the pressure as much as he possibly can. Deft on the Ziggs, not really able to get too much pressure onto the turret plates just yet. And uh, he has not used a single biscuit. Would be nice if he had cut down, but that's probably the last time I'll mention it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> probably, I, you know, I can't guarantee it. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. As uh, you were talking about those ganks, Deft is level six. He is going to get comboed here by Lahens and Ignited is going to use that satchel very late. Does flash onto the back side of it. In comes Cuz, looking to force it. And it looks like he gets it with the permafrost. First blood onto the Ziggs in the bottom lane as Cuz comes up with a huge gank. Oh man, Deft teleportless, now flashless as well. Canyon's just a little bit too slow here on the play. Cuz has his ultimate available and they can set this up so easily here on the overextended Zig. And that should be able to be the first objective here for the side of KT Rolster. Again, plates getting worn down here on the top side. Keen picking up money without even being involved. Even going to try to proxy this wave will be unsuccessful. But KT not going to start the Drake up just yet. They're going to take their win, reset here, and take the gold. As we take a look at this fight one more time, they get the knock up here. Lehens on this Alistair sets up the combo. There's the stun. Even though the flash and satchel charge is almost enough, Puzz is able to buffer this and make it work. The ultimate comes out in depth. No flash now. His teleport down can't quickly return to lane. Yeah, not quite respecting the ability for them to chain that CC. And Deft does get run down the lane. Now Canyon. Uh, does get the back out of KT, so they try to go for this Drake here. The Ziggs, even early on, can try to control this choke, and let's see if they can actually get it done. Lahens trying to threaten, but see the rest of the team is just backing away, and they will give this one over. So DK at least able to pick up the first Drake of the game. Yeah, quick to respond, return to that objective after KT back, and first objective does go their way. In terms of gold, it's a small one, but it's early game, so it's quite significant here. Rift Herod will be the next point of contention here. You've got to be so respectful as Def now. No flash. Satchel charge gives you a little bit of a leash, but it's not always alone going to be enough. See how quickly he can just toss these abilities in 
and take this wave, though, and then back away. Wanting to push the issue even further, in fact, down here in this lane. And this is the first real damage Dept is going to maybe attempt to get on this turret, but no plates for the Ziggs. Yeah, and he is going into the Seraph's Embrace build. Eventually, he's going to delay the amount of damage that he can do pretty significantly until he's at about three items. He would also love, especially on this patch, the, the plates are still 175, right? He would love to push in and get some plates and actually threaten some turret kills, but not able to get that pressure going on the bottom side as Aiming Lahens have held their own. And, gotten some help from a nice little Cuz to join them down the bottom side. Yeah, Cuz is, is there. Keen's got Pryo. BDD gets control. He's now picked up his Merc Treads. And things are going pretty swimmingly here for KT Rolster's early game. Yes, the Ziggs will be a problem later on. The ability for the Jarvan to engage is potentially going to be a problem later on too. But so far, KT just kind of riding the momentum. They would have loved to grab that early Drake. But in terms of gold right now, sitting pretty and aiming's just catching these waves and no real damage done to the turret means you're not worried about Ziggs passive, you're not worried about that additional damage coming through. Yeah, just chilling out, farming it back and forth. It is uh, it's an LCK game about this. You know, we're 10 minutes in and we just cast JDG BLG and I was like, hey, seven minutes, we haven't had action. What's going on? We're definitely going to get action and we did. I can't really say the same about this one, Wolf. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm watching this, I'm like, I don't know. Because DK, they have Jax, they have Azir, they have Ziggs. Why would you ever want to fight before you have two, three items? I mean, obviously there are some spikes. You've got the Jarvan, you've got the Azir. There are plays you could make, but will they? I mean, That's will, my question. I mean, it will often rely on KT overextending and putting themselves in harm's way for a big Cataclysm or Flag and Drag engage onto BDD, for example. But no one's really been under pressure, obviously, because having to flash early to secure that kill, but otherwise all flashes up for KT. Who do you pick? Who do you find? Kellen roaming topside here. Well, there's a ward in that brush. It's going to be hard for him to make something happen with this level six. KT identify this, drop the Rift Herald in mid, and we'll further some additional gold here for this Orianna. Pick up some plates. Yeah, not going to overextend for this. Just yep. some plates over to Cuz. BDD going to miss out on those. Showmaker does take that one out, and uh, yeah, like you said, you know, Kellen showing on the top side, trying to make something happen. I, I like the idea, especially with Leona Jax, and they do clear that one out. Cuz and Lehens are waiting here for Deft, and he knows it. He's not going to teleport back to that turret just to get dove, so Plate Gold's going over to aiming this entire time, and Deft is missing massive farm. It's a good read from Deft and D-plus Kia that there's a potential dive here, but this is so much money going into aiming's pocket, and this Ziggs is going to take so long to come online. All the farm denied, all the plates picked up here. And man, this is not going to be an easy one for D-plus to pull off. We like the draft, but the situation is not so great for the Ziggs. It's going to take a long time before he's going to be relevant. Yeah, aiming just essentially catching up with that one in terms of the CS. And as you mentioned, the two turret plates pretty huge there for the side of aiming. So he's getting pretty much a free lane to just farm it out. He's the Zaya. That's what he would like to do. Now we do have Lahens on the top side of the map. Uh, the other side of the rift support trying to make a play up here on the top side. Keen's taking a lot of damage up there underneath the turret. Has not gone into the Dominus, has his flash available, so just threatening it, but not actually making action happen, Wolf. Yeah, that was a very close call there. <laughs> if he committed any further, that would have been the end of him with Canyon nearby, flash and ultimate available. Jarvan's engage range is insanely high. Keen will walk away with his life. They don't commit. Lehen's looking for Showmaker. A little shuffle away, and he will be okay. And we do have the straight coming up here. It is a Chemtech, but you do want to pick these up as early as possible. We've seen teams run away with four Drakes and it be game changing. I'm sure DK knows a little bit about that. So, yeah, just going to wait out for it. And maybe Def can hit his Leandris before we do get into this fight. I, I think that would be pretty much the one time you would want to actually fight over this as DK. Otherwise, you know, if KT make a mistake, maybe you make a play for it. But otherwise, I would expect KT to he should have take it. this one down. He does have it. And he's got, of course, Unleashed Teleport. Just going to teleport back to the safety of his turret here before this fight does break out. But as you mentioned, this is the big one. This is the fight where you can see D-plus really look for a, a straight-up 5v5 fight. Look at the damage starting to come through on that Leandris here. It's going to take time. They can whittle away, and he's got his ultimate as well. Yeah, they're trying to force this ult out early. Kellen is not going to hit it. He gets root down. We have the teleport coming in, and Lehens gets the double knockup, trying to get this one going, but that's going into a joke. They don't want to do that. Lehens getting pretty low, and he is going to back out of this one. But KT take control of the river. 
DK considering getting on in here. Some low health bars on the hands and aiming, and that's the bomb. Forces the Feather Storm, and now aiming does not have that ultimate for the follow-up engage from DK. Slow and steady wins the Dragon here for D+. Double the Andres, and they are chipping away at these health bars. Sure, Kellen's engage was very lackluster, but it won't ultimately matter. Oh, and they're looking for a bit more. Cousin Keen overextending quite a bit, and the poke damage is coming out here. Some low health bars. You talked about the Leandres. Finally, they are going to find Showmaker in the front, but there's just no follow-up on that one. So DK, a lot of skirmishing here. And finally, they commit onto the Croc, but they don't take out Kellen. They don't have the damage to take him out. And it's three kills going straight into the pockets of KT. Oh, really rough overextension here for KT. They got the slow damage, but they do push way too far in. And that is going to be another set of gold going over to KT. I mean, it's a 3,000 gold. Sure, you lost the objective. It is Mountain Soul, which, by the way, you start stacking those up, you're going to be able to deal with a lot of that Zeke's poke later on if KT start winning this game here, or winning the objectives, rather, from here. They're certainly winning the game right now, despite the Dragon lead for D+. But they just got a little bit too trigger happy on the jacks. And that's one of the awkward things as, as we take a look at the MasterCard lane economy snapshot here. Small lead for BDD, pretty large leads everywhere else. But I was going to say, one of the disjointed parts about this composition is you can use the jacks, you can use the Jarvan to engage, and you can set up bombs with it. But if you don't actually have the combo set up, it's hard to actually chase teams down after you poke them away. It's usually much better to just huddle around the objective, take your wins where you can, and force KT to come to you. You got a little bit excited on this one. No uh, KT puns intended, but this really ends up being, <laughs> unfortunately, uh -oh. KT turning this one around in a massive way. Keen narrowly escapes here, and the Cataclysm works against D plus Kia. Yeah. So KT able to totally take over the game from here. Now let's see. I mean, they're trying to make a stake for the second Rift Herald, but Cuz is in the pit, or he's nearby. Keen and Kana going head-to-head -head down on the bottom side here. BDD not sure who to support, as Showmaker kind of in the same boat. Keen looking to turn off to Showmaker, but Keen is left all alone. They can't get over the wall. He's so far in there, and DK will take down the Croc in this one. And there you have it. So pretty interesting fight. I, I don't think that Keen necessarily had to go that deep, and uh, Canyon also picked up the Rift Herald. Yeah, Canyon picks up the Rift Herald, so this is pretty huge for D+. I mean, it's going to be one step that they need, like one step in a, a series of many if they want to get back into this game. But look, they have two Drake lead. If they could turn this into some additional prio, perhaps, for the Rift Herald, I mean, the timing of this doesn't work out too great for them. It's only three minutes, or nearly three minutes away from that third dragon for them. But if they can get Mountain Soul Point, by a lot of times they have a jack side lane win condition where they can slow this game down, buy time for the Ziggs to come online. It's definitely not all doom and gloom. And that was a big mistake from KT that D Plus are going to feel a little bit better about after this. Yeah, it gives them a, a foothold into making this one a little bit more even. You talked about comeback mechanics and the potential to just wombo combo your way back into a game from 9K down. Uh, we do know G2 we were able to do that a little bit earlier on today. Um, DK definitely have a pretty similar comp. I think they may need a little bit more items in terms of this one. You got the Azir, the Ziggs, and the Jacks only sitting on their first ones for now. But so, that's so, the, the Ziggs potential right there with the Rift Herald. Yeah, just to explain for those who don't know what happened there, the Rift Herald charges down the turret to sub 25%. Ziggs can blow it up with his satchel instantly. So that's exactly what Depth is looking for. Uses his passive, uses his satchel. Now, this fight here is going in the favor of D+. Keen thinks he can get into the back line, but perhaps threaten Showmaker. But Kana is waiting, tracking him, knows he's likely to try to flank this. And of course, Showmaker has self peel. Keen does a ton of damage here, but it's not ultimately enough, unfortunately, uh, for the side of KT. And Keen's flank is a bust. They do end up giving over the Rift Herald. And with Ziggs' as passive, that's more gold. That gold lead for KT here is still there, but you can see it's starting to shrink a little bit. Yeah, it's starting to level out just a little bit. Goal difference over time, powered by AWS. And I mean, this is probably going to slow down from here, to be quite honest. I, I don't think that uh, we are going to see too much action with no Drake and no Rift Herald on the map. But who knows? I mean, let's see what they have in the tank. For now, we just have a little fight over this Rift Scuttler here. And Dev just farming away. He is going to be building towards that Seraph's Embrace, which Eventually, uh, he will be doing some big damage. Not going to go for the Shadow Flame just yet. We'll be curious to see the rest of his itemization. Yeah, that is going to be quite interesting to see. And obviously, the Nasher's Tooth for Showmaker is going to really 
improve his damage output for objective control. 40 seconds to go on this Mountain Drake. Doesn't look like he's going to have it just in time for this yet. Doesn't have teleport, just teleported back in. Would have been a huge spike for him, but nonetheless, D-plus absolutely want to fight over this. And if they can control these choke points, they have a Leona, they have an Azir. It's hard for KT to get in here and engage. It's hard for Orianna to set up a ball. And they have the burn damage that they could just keep landing that poke. And that's exactly what Deft needs to do. The burn damage is huge. I mean, double Eandries against Renekton, Sejuani, Alistair is just really oppressive. And I, I think that as long as you can keep them at arm's length, DK will be happy to just continue to poke them down. Got to hit it, though. Waiting in the bush. Kellen does get engaged on, but he's Leona. It's really difficult to die on that champion. As now KT moving in as a five-man unit. Kellen just going to run away from this one. DK will give them the river and continue to try to poke them out. Uh, ball placement here, fantastic for BDD. Now they have gained control of the choke point themselves. All the poke missing from depth there, and KT just kind of ride out the storm here. Double control wards there on that pixel brush. It's really difficult to actually aim that poke now, but it is landing. <laughs> There's the poke. It's coming on in over the top, but you can see some shields helping them along the way, although the damage has been done. Kana also on the flank here on the right side. He's looking for that perfect angle, and KT don't seem to have any idea this is coming in. Let's see if he can find the perfect timing to go for this engage. Where is he? Okay, there he is. They finally find him. And now he's not able to get much damage done at all. Flashes, hops over the wall, just trying to gain some space for the team as DK. They're looking to take down this dragon, and they should be able to get it. Lahens not able to get in. And we will have a fight where nobody dies. A lot of the poke didn't land for Deft, but the threat of Kana kept KT really honest, and the fact that they had to stay back in that choke and wanted to avoid the Counter-Strike bought just enough time. They see him at the last possible second there, but he buys enough time for D-plus to actually secure the Dragon and get out. Now it's Soul Point here, despite the gold deficit. Again, that Mountain Soul is going to be so impactful in this game, especially for Jarvan and Leona in the front line with those additional shields they're going to get. So this is pretty massive for D-plus. And I think if Kuz's ultimate actually connects with Kana there, perhaps they at least get the Jax as a kill. But I think D-plus would have been happy for the sacrifice to get the Dragon. Not only did they get the Dragon, but Kana escapes. Yeah, we have the win probability powered by AWS. You can see that it is still very even. Take note, though, that it did dip down to like 80% in favor of KT, but since then has tapered off pretty significantly. Yeah, you know those dragons really do mean a lot, and it is going to be a question of, you know, will D-plus' scaling on the Ziggs ultimately become relevant enough to actually overdo KT's lead right now. See, he's working towards that Void Staff. The tier completed now. And still no second item here for Showmaker. Once he gets that Nasher's Tooth, that is really going to up his ability to apply Liliandri's and do additional damage to the front line that KT is trying to use to close the gap. Because aiming on this eye, he's low range. We've been talking about it all game long. Getting out poked by Def, getting out poked by Showmaker. This is a problem. You need to keep them at arm's length. Yeah, absolutely. Zig's one of the best. Uh, Leandri's a flyer as well. Uh, could even potentially go into like an Oblivion Orb if he wants to cut down on some of the healing that we do have on the side of KT. We'll have to wait and see because obviously he's great at applying that as well. KT right now just controlling the top river, just waiting to see if anyone will, uh, you know, overstep their boundaries because this is one of the ways that KT actually get and engage on their terms, right? We talk about this all the time, the vision control. And you can see that the hands and Cuz looking for something. They try to get in onto Canyon, but going pretty deep for that one. Yeah, a little bit deep on that. Won't be able to commit any further. Cuz just going to back out here. This is a very tense game state because I don't want to say KT's comp is on a clock necessarily, but You've got a Jax, who's going to be a big problem in the side lane that Keem won't necessarily be able to match as this game goes longer. You're dealing with double scaling AP threats with the Leandries, and KT don't have any Drakes, so this game is just going to go longer basically by default. As uh, Keen looking to uh, get out of this one. Ooh, pretty close on that, but kind of not going to continue on that one. At this point, the Renekton can kind of trade. You know, it depends on the situation if he gets some damage on in, but kind of pretty confident to try to take this 1v1 if Keen does want it at this point. Only up a level is Keen, so still pretty even in that side lane. The Void Staff completed for the Zig since you talked about the double a AP scaling threats. I mean, that's going to be super important, especially when you are dealing with, you know, a Sejuani that's going to be extremely tanky. You want something to chip through, or rather chunk through, the magic resists on the side of KT that they will definitely build into Azir and Ziggs. Yeah, definitely true. 
See BDD with two rods completed here, but does not quite have that second item yet. And this is a really scary moment when you consider the AP threats are so big here for D+. And 90 seconds to go on this dragon. BDD would love to finish that second item here before this fight breaks out. But I mean, if D+, get this, the game turns really on its head quite sniffly. We talked about, oh, we're one step closer to that soul, one step closer to the soul. This is the soul this time around. You can see in terms of the gold here, aiming and keen massively ahead, but doesn't necessarily matter if they can't get to their opponents to hit them. And that's been the big problem here for aiming. Yeah, actually utilizing the items that you will have is uh, something we'll have to wait and see. I mean, he, he is a Zaya with Flash and Cleanse. There is a way, like, again, if this fight goes in the right direction and they can get a favorable engage for him to get in the faces of DK and actually deal that damage, uh, the problem does arise, you know, from behind. Perhaps you do not get it going as Cuz. It's going to steal away the red. <laughs> gets, uh, gets big oohs and ahs from yeah. the crowd. You know, we're not used to this amount of action, Wolf. I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> well, KT now trying to get some additional oppressive vision around this uh, this Drake because this is such a critical fight. We do see no death cap yet for BDD. And this is a problem. They want to have that. Okay, picks it up now. Just backed for it. And this is going to be so important for KT. They can't actually hold on to this choke point without BDD being here. He's not going to commit teleport. He's walking down slowly. We'll be able to clear this wave. But time works against KT once Steph starts hitting that poke. Once Showmaker starts hitting it, they've got to pick somebody. They've got to do it fast. Trying to go in on that canyon. He's just going to flash away. He says, no, I don't. You know, this is not how we win fights, right? I'm just going to use this flash. It's still a win to the side of KT. Now you don't have that engaged threat from the Jarvan as much. Obviously, still can find some angles. And Deft, uh, essentially, you can see what DK are trying to do. They're just trying to throw bombs over the wall, throw soldiers in. They're going to find BDD, and that is a huge amount of poke damage. It's not going to be game-changing, though. BDD going to run around to his team. See if he wants to teleport back into this one. It's very awkward for him. He's super low. Looks like that's what he's going to do, but this body is so much time for D-plus to now get on top of this dragon here, looking for Kana on the flank. We'll get his counter-strike out here. Again, time working against KT. There's that teleport. And you can see the amount of poke that Depth is already putting out. BDD is back into the fight. They want to pull the trigger right now. They just got to go in. KT, you got to do something. And they're going to get the flash out of Showmaker. And that allows them to pick up this Mountain Drake. But in goes Kellen. Just going to go down for free. Not much that DK can do to follow up on that. The Satchel is nothing. There's a wall in the way. And a huge divide might help him out. But the Permafrost is coming out. And I don't think Depth is going to get away from this one. No Satchel, no hope as Canyon. Trying to get something done here. He's got Showmaker with a huge amount of damage, but this is 2v3, 2v4 even potentially, and they just stick around for way too long. Keen gonna take him out with the help of BDD as Keen is still in there, and this game is going wild now. I mean, KT deny the Dragon, but they're getting even more here. So many kills going over, and I think D Plus really bungled this one because there were so many things that went right. You push the Orion of the fight, you force it to teleport back in, but they end up losing control of the pit itself. So much of Death's poke doesn't actually land in the neutral fight, referring to, of course, the setup on the objective itself. And look at Showmaker here on the edge. He's forced to flash out, so that's how you know you should be able to kind of kite your way out of here. But then for some reason, Kellen goes back in, and that's disastrous. Now your Leon is gone, you've got no peel. He could have saved Depth here if he hadn't gone in, but he did. And then Permafrost just barely gets tapped. I mean, Depth so on the edge of escaping. Showmaker uses Emperor's Divide to try to save him. So many things go through. And then Canyon thinks he can turn this with Cataclysm to give Showmaker some additional procs here of that Leandre's and the Nasher's Tooth. But it's all gone awry. And it's a play of Kellen there again. I mean, they were going to lose the Dragon, but you lost way more than you bargained for here as D+. And Kellen was one of the players, by the way, that we were most interested in his performance in the world's quality. Qualifiers regionally in the LCK was part of the reason we, we, why we believed D Plus was going to do better than fans expected, even as a fourth seed. It's why so many people are saying D Plus might be back in this tournament, but so far his performances haven't lived up to the standards of what we've seen from Kellen in the past. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely deserves to be shouted out, and, you know, still hoping that he can turn it around. And I, I think, you know, there's really a fine line you got to walk when you're playing this kind of composition. It, it's not an easy one where you, you press your R button and you kill the enemy, right? Maybe for Ziggs against Zaya, but uh, different as Kellen is going to walk in front of this one. Definitely the right place to be this time around and will eat that ult. Does have to flash away as DK really trying to press that poke in because that's really what they got to do, but they got to Renekton behind him. They have no idea. Deft is in a lot of trouble. Satchel not going to be able to do much. Gets stunned up and killed immediately as Lahens gets into the thick of things and KT, they're going to find the fight that they need at this 
this entire time. Double kill already for aiming. Can he line up the Penta? I'm already looking for it because we have so many. Kana though trying to get on in there. And unfortunately he's just gonna go down, gives the triple kill over to aiming. This game might have just ended in a couple of plays, Wolf. It looks like it. And once again, okay, they're gonna back off. They're gonna play it safe. You don't want to go 0-2. I mean, 20 seconds on depth here. He could be the savior of this game if he does, of course, survive. You see Showmaker just pushing out that way. Bottom side is keen. Gets onto this. And once again, look at the timing of this. He just oh, barely gets in, gets the stun off. But regardless, it's Lahens. I mean, you hit that slice and dice, or rather the uh, stun there from Renekton. Regardless, if you don't, it's still going to be a play from Lahens that wins this for you. The knockup is fantastic. D plus just trying to hold on to their base. Didn't see the keen flag. Not enough vision. And it all comes crashing down. The inhibitor down. Baron was up. And I mean, D plus, they had the Drake lead, but that's all they were hanging on to in this game. KT denied soul. And with the advantages they have plus Baron, there's no way D plus are going to get that soul now. Red Bull Baron power play coming through in a big way for KT. That fine line has been crossed. KT in total control of this one now, about 8,000 gold in the lead. And this is this looks like a lot of the games we have cast in the LCK Wolf, right? Like this has happened before. KT finding great engages, finding fantastic flanks with the Lehens and Keen and just ripping apart opponents that aren't able to deal with that pressure. And it's just great to see them be able to pull it off here once again on the world stage. Oh lost a little bit of the power we expected from them in our top three in the LCK playoffs, but coming back in a big way here against D+, and it's almost a 10,000 gold lead here now for KT. The kill difference is massive. This is what KT is known for, one of the highest in the LCK. I'm looking for a second inhibitor here. Any picks means certain doom here for D+, but they've got to do something to defend these turrets. They've got good wave clear, but it's just not going to be enough. Doesn't seem to be enough as Cuz and Lahan's looking for that engage. They'll find anyone. They're gonna find Canyon as they go pretty deep for that one. The aftershock maybe saving Cuz, but at this point the damage not quite there on the side of DK. So that's jungler down now. Canyon not in this fight. Kana also being poked out. KT just waiting, just sitting in the base for just waiting for more waves to come in to potentially end this game. TPs are coming in. Yeah, TP is coming in. That wave clears buying them time, but only a little bit here. Still 75 seconds left on Baron. Yeah, it doesn't really feel like that wave clear is there as Kellen just going to be taken out on the bottom side. Lahens finds another engage and Cuz just trying to front line here. The Baron buff just way too much for the Ziggs and Azir to handle, although did they overstep? BDD gets pretty low. Lahens trying to give his life for him as in they go. Hukana just gets ripped to shreds. Saming is huge. 706. He's using that massive wallet right now to just shred through the entirety of DK's team. As Canyon, he's going to respawn, but you can't respawn your Nexus. Canyon, he's going to take the one kill. Does not matter. Aiming and KT will rip through DK and take this game. KT Rolster do it again. They have not lost since summer to D plus Kia. They have had the advantage in this matchup and in their first best of one against each other, they will take it as well. And they had such great leads in the early game. As yeah, you gotta stand up, you gotta fist bump. We do it in the middle of the, you know, we do it in the uh, law park here. We're doing it in Korea now at the KBS Arena, but Valdez, I mean, it, it felt like there were certainly ways in which D-plus could have won this game. The poke wasn't landing. They were overextending, and there was that one big fight they decided to take with Kana after getting the objective that really backfired, and I think that was the real backbreaking moment. Sure, it took a long time for the game